Okay. Yeah, we're checking. Well, uh, Mike Mine is quarantined at home, so he's trying okay. to do this remotely. Oh, wow. He was it, he was in Florida, so oh, he has a quarantine. That's one of the states, yeah. Okay, so my wife is checking. We're not we're not on Facebook yet. Okay. Yeah, I'm going to text Mike Miner. Hold on. Is it a Pepsi drinking Pepsi? It's not going up on Facebook yet. Oh. All right, that, I just I just texted Mike again. Yeah, so did Jesse. Okay. Okay. Okay, well, okay. Um, so I just opened up the meeting. Please this meeting me. is being recorded. Allegiance. I pledge allegiance to the flag United, of the United States, United States of America, of America. And, and to the republic, the republic which is stands, one, one nation, nation under God, God indivisible, indivisible, with liberty and justice, and justice for all. Yeah. Thank you. Um, I just want to mention the executive order has been extended until August 5th. Um, that allows us to do Zoom meetings. So um, our workshop will also be a, a Zoom meeting. Um, so until August 5th, so our, our first meeting in August uh, most likely will still continue to be a Zoom meeting. I know we'd all rather meet in person, but um, I think um, just for everyone's sake, I, I think this is the way to continue for now. Um, so also our um, zoning board meeting that was scheduled for tomorrow night has been canceled um, and not sure what's going to be happening with the planning board if they'll go on a Zoom meeting or not. Uh, the approval of the minutes, the May 26, 2020 workshop meeting. Any comments, uh, corrections? I have none. I'm good. good. Okay. On a motion? So moved. Second. Second. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Okay. The June 2nd, 2020 board meeting. I have nothing. I'm good. I'm okay. Okay. Nick, are you with us? Okay. On a motion? So moved. So moved. Second? Second. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Okay. And then we also have the June 8th, 2020 special workshop meeting. Any corrections, concerns, comments? Nothing here. I'm good. Okay. Hold on, hold on a second. Nick, we can't hear you. Oh, you're not muted, so I don't know what's going on over there. <laughs> I see his mouth moving, but I don't see anything coming out yet. <laughs> can I hear you? Well, that's new. <laughs> can you hear me? <laughs> We're not going to go there. <laughs> so. <laughs> okay, it's, wor it's working. <laughs> on, those, on the June 8th minutes, I'm listed as one of the people present, and on the second page, I'm listed as, I'm listed as absent, and that's really confusing for me. Hmm. So were you there or not? Yeah, that was the meeting that I thought was 7:30, and oh. you guys yep. started without me, but I did join in. So, yeah, you came in later on the meeting. Yes. I matter i just was trying to figure out how i was there and not there at the same time because i think about things like that <sighs> on uh, motion so move second second all in favor aye. aye and you know what going forward um i'm going to we're going to assume that everybody is in favor of something if not please like if you oppose it please interrupt me before right. Before we move on, okay? Would it be more accurate to assume everybody's in favor except me and I'm opposed? <laughs> that would probably be more accurate, yes. Okay, so uh, the next thing is comments from the floor, comments from the audience. I know this is going out live um, on Facebook, and this is agenda items only. So if there's any comments. Did we give out the number? 737-1034. Mm -hmm. All right. 
So, you know, when, when we come down to the other things um, in the end here, uh, other comments, you know, um, people can also comment at that point. We don't usually get anybody that comments from agenda items. So under new business, um, resolution authorizing mayor to enter into an intermunicipal agreement with Westchester County for solid waste and recyclable disposal. This is something we do all the time. And we, um, this, this one I believe is for five years. Correct. This agreement. And I'm just trying to find the agreement here, which I ha just had in my hand. Oh my goodness. It is, it is for five years retroactive to October. Mm hmm. All right. Oh my gosh. Don't worry about it, Teresa. It's a, st a standard agreement. Every single municipality in Westchester County enters into the same okay. agreement. Yeah, I was just going to read it so people understood what it was, and um, and I don't have it here. And That's I just fine. Here. So I'm sorry. I apologize. But, yes, it's an agreement that we're going to enter into. Um, we've done it before, and the board has read that within their packet. So on a motion? i move. Second? Second. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Okay. Um, number B. It's a motion to consider. Uh, we're going to be calling a public hearing for a public hearing on August 4th regarding amending 211-19 of the Village Code by adding subsection F penalties for offenses as follows. Um, every person, firm, or corporation guilty of violating any provision of this article shall be punishable by a fine as follows. First offense, warning. Second offense, $25. Third offense, 50 Fourth offense, 100 Fifth offense, and all additional offenses, 250 So we're not, we're not going to overly get into this because we're going at the, at the public hearing we're scheduling. We will go into more detail. And Stephanie... I would like to ask you to just give us a review of this again, um, you know, mostly for the audience, whoever's listening in, what, what we're doing with this public hearing. Sure. Okay. So I think those of you who were part of this went on for a year or more, and it was regarding private garages and parking spaces, and what the board, what you guys did was you took out and removed some language and added in additional um, and we were mostly concerned with commercial vehicles and the amount of commercial vehicles, and this took quite a bit of time, and who could park or store recreational vehicles. That has all actually been published. The problem was when that new language uh, went to the state for publishing, um, there was an entire section that was removed inadvertently, and so what we're going to be doing as well is adding that back in. It was really just an error in... I believe whoever received it um, and probably thought that it meant we were adding certain language and then somehow uh, that was all we wanted in there. So anyway, uh, Section 7, A, B, C, D, E, and F, and Section 8, storage of vehicles and um, parking and loading spaces. Anyway, that's going to be put back in. And then we will add what you referred to as the penalty section, which you just read. So we don't actually need the public hearing to add in the inadvertently removed language. We do for the penalties. So maybe at the public hearing we could discuss a little bit, or I could just briefly summarize what's being added back in, or, I mean, it's up to the board. But that's where we are, except that Trustee Zachary mentioned... What? Hi. Hi. <laughs> oh, boy. Okay, so 211.19 for the rest of the board, E, that's the language we, we had removed, um, paragraphs 1 and 2, and we added a 1, 2, and then an A, and, uh, and so forth. And Trustee Zachary pointed out that 2A, for those of you that are looking, the fourth line from the bottom, and I think I think the problem was if you're all following or if you're not, um, used for personal businesses. Nick, did you just want it to say for personal business? Is that what you're saying? Yeah, what we were trying to exclude were um, this started with the pickup truck thing because some people have those yep. pickup trucks that are above a certain weight, even though they're just being used as a personal vehicle, this, the New York State uh, DMV requires them to get a commercial plate 
because of the size of the pickup. So we wanted to exclude um, um, larger pickups that have uh, de that have uh, commercial plates because of that weight limit, as long as it's being used for personal use, and um, which you can personal use or personal business, I guess you could say. But it's not meant to be a commercial vehicle uh, used as a commercial vehicle. It has commercial plates, but it's a personal vehicle. So I think we okay. should say maybe say for personal use instead of personal. So business. we're just gonna we're gonna omit businesses and put in the word use. Yes. Okay. Got it. So that correction will be made. Does everyone agree? I think that, that was our intent. If everyone remembers that. I do remember that myself. Yes. yes. Okay. So, okay. So I'll make that change. We're going to add in the additional language that was in blue today for you guys. Next time it will be yellow and purple. And then we'll have penalty public hearing in August. Okay. Yeah, sure. great. Thank you, Stephanie. Couple of, uh, a couple of things. Um with the stickers, we noted when we, when we, in the law that that the village would set that fee, uh, and I'm trying to remember if we did that. Did we? I think we talked about having like a ten dollar fee to get the sticker. Free. Did we? It's free. I remember so the, free. Yeah. It's free. Okay, because I think in the wording it says that a sticker, a sticker is required, and it says that fees for said permit shall be set by resolution um, of the Board of Trustees and put into the fee schedule. That's that's in the wording here. So maybe we should just say we should change that to fees for said permit uh, uh, could be changed in the future. Leave it free and just change the wording that fees for this can be changed in the future, but right now it's free. Or just leave it out. But, but right now it says that we're going to set a fee, so we should either take that out or change it to we, we reserve the option in the future. Do you want to, excuse me, do you want to put fees for set permit, comma, if any, comma, shall be set? That works. Yeah, that's good. Mm -hmm. yep. Okay. Yep. I was thinking, because then if there are any, so right now there aren't, people can look it up, and if you ever decide to, because otherwise you'd have to amend this again yeah. and do a public hearing, so I yeah. think you should just... Mm -hmm. Yeah, we'll excellent. If you're, you're, any. Good, good. you're good at that English thing, Stephanie. <laughs> Yeah. Okay, so I'll make that correction, too, and I'll pass it all around again. Yeah. Okay. The last thing was, um, was is it separate, or is it in these fees, does it also include people parking on front lawns? Or is that, or is that separate? I think that was something that was taken out of there, Nick, by inadvertently, because that was something that we did include in there. That should be in there, and I'm just trying to make sure that the wording is there for that, that these fees are are, these fines also relate to parking on front lawns. That and the and and the that was actually that's a more widespread issue than than an overabundance of trailers. We've had few properties with too many commercial vehicles, like the one up on Henry. We've had the one that triggered this on um, that was that Catherine. Uh, but whatever. But there's more widespread parking on front lawns than there is. Um, Overabundance of trailers and commercial vehicles. So and I that think that's part to, of this section, Nick. That's what I'm thinking. I mean, we addressed okay. it as part of it, and I don't remember if it exists elsewhere in the code or if it's part. If it's might be simplest to include it in this with new fees. Is there a way to do that? I think that was the original intent that this would be all be included in this. I agree. And somehow it got. Take it out like the other. Right. The only thing there is that you cannot park in re the uh, the part that's getting put back says that you can't park in a required front yard and that driveways must be um, paved or bituminous or whatever. That's in the wording somewhere. You know, they have to be, you can't just uh, have dirt driveways in the village. Um, so, okay. so unless we put specific wording or somehow make it clear, that it, you know that that should be made a little more clear maybe in the wording that this includes parking on front lawns. Yep. Okay. That's it. All right. Um, so, on a motion to set the public hearing on August first, uh, August fourth. I'm sorry for amending two eleven dash nineteen. On a motion. So moved. Second. Second. All in favor. Aye. Aye. All right. 
Moving along, um, consideration for letting Entergy use Lens. I'm going to do Lens Cove parking lot slash pavilion on October 3rd of this year. They want to hold an event. Um, I don't know, it's kind of an interesting event. It's almost like a scavenger hunt type thing. Um, and in the end, they want to meet either Lens Cove Marcus. I'm going to include Lens Cove still. That was their original thought. Agreed. Or, Agreed. or, um, or our pavilion. Mm-hmm. So um, if you have any more information on this, I know you've been speaking to Jerry Nappy directly, Marcus. Mm-hmm. So um, he'll provide insurance, hold the, vill- hold the village harmless. That's the first thing I'm a- I asked for. So we'll be co- we'll be covered for insurance. Um, I also told them that if this virus continues um, and it's an issue, that we can always rescind the permission. He said he understood that as well. He just wanted to start planning w- way in advance to see if this can work out for him. They're going to do a like scavenger hunt. The employees have to drive throughout Westchester County and find some items. Then they all get together and see. Um, it's a you know it's a um, it's an employee thing of we'll have everybody working together, and then at the end, they're going to have like a, a sandwich and just hang out for a little while at the park or at the pavilion and then go home afterwards. Well, do they need bathrooms? They, he knows the bathroom doesn't work, so I told him that already. You know what, well, but you know what they maybe could, they could do? They can uh, rent maybe some water potties give, for the day. Give us yeah. a couple thousand dollars to fix up the bathrooms in exchange for holding the event there. <laughs> I can always ask. Yeah. I, I mean, I, otherwise, what are they going to do? Get a couple of porta potties? Yeah. 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 It's okay. an October event, so you know we're months away. But I, I think, I think what the ask was also that there would be, um, you know, the village board has to approve, and they have, and they have to fill out, fill out the application. But the village board has to approve if there's a fee for the rental of it, or if it's. Um, Correct. It's, uh, no fee, and mm-hmm. my personal opinion is, um, it's I I don't think there should be a fee for this. Um, they have paid additional money for this year. Looking at what is it? Three hundred dollars. Yeah. No, I think we could even if there yeah. was a fee schedule, we could waive it. Yeah. yeah. Right. Yep. Uh, they have to show their insurance, of course, right? Yep. Absolutely. Right. They'll have yep. to comply with everything else. Yep. Yeah. Hey, hey, Marcus, what exactly are they hunting for? They're doing like a little scavenger hunt. They're, they're going to ha- they're gonna have to drive to certain locations, find something, take a picture of it, and then load everything together, and then when they, and then email it back or text it to the to the judge, and then, and, as they meet, and then everybody has to get back, and whoever gets back with everything before everybody else gets an award. That's awesome. Okay. It sounds like a, it sounds like a good thing. I think we should do that awesome. ourselves. I think we should do that too. <laughs> I think that's awesome. Okay, thank and you. I, I just want to clarify something here. I, I just didn't think it was appropriate to charge them a fee. Um, they renegotiated the pilot, and um, for the next two years, we've gotten quite a bit more money. Um, each year, they they are very generous, and they donate to our Buchanan Day. So I, I think, you know, um, considering the money that they donate to the village, um you know, the three hundred dollars in our budget isn't isn't going to make a whole hill of beans. But um, the money that they gave us um, for uh, not only the the pilot, but also the infrastructure agreement for another year plus Buchanan Day, uh, you know, I think you know the village can do that. I agree. It would be pretty petty. I agree. Yep. But can I ask a question regarding the um, the stages of reopening and any state guidelines? Mm-hmm. Uh, what guidelines do we have to be under if, in order for them to proceed with this? And are we at that point now? Like right now, you could have outdoor gatherings up to. I think it's, I think fifty right now. Um, that's so, the, that's that. So we're talking about October. Um, yeah. I think I think they had the number of employees um, about fifty fifty employees. So they meet the guidelines right now. Uh, under under the under the phase we are right now, they have okay. their social ga- they have their social distancing right now. But in October, we might be in better shape or we might be in worse shape. So that's why I told him I always like to be devil's advocate. If we're in worse shape, we might have to cancel everything. He says he understands that. Uh, so under current under, under the current state uh, guidance, uh, they're good. Yes. Good. Okay. No way to know in October. That's right. 
Can't see that far ahead. Okay. On a motion? So moved. Second? Second. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Uh, just, uh, yeah, so just to be cl clear for the minutes for Cindy, so we're gonna we're approving it and we're waiving the fee. I was gonna make sure that's the that's the motion yeah. where it's that being adopted. Yeah. Yeah. Thank you. Thank you, Marcus. Okay, information from officers and departments. Justice court reports for March. Um, there was yeah, this goes way back, guys. Um, there was an amount of one hundred and eighteen dollars and fourteen fourteen. There's also um, April 2020, the court was, was closed, and May 2020, the court was closed, so there's no amount there. Um, Marcus, my understanding is they've cleared the way to open court again next Tuesday, the 14th. 14th. Okay. Th that's so, correct. So, so we're going to be working out, um, making sure we get, get the doors cleaned as much as possible, we're having the night, guy, the night gentleman here to clean the doors and the elevators. We'll have some hand sanitizer at the door uh, so people can wash their hands. Again, this is this is controlled by Justice Court. Um, yeah, out of so our hands, this yeah, one. Exactly. Yeah. Okay. So, and then in the morning, whoever comes in in the morning just needs to go through everything again, especially the door handles and, and everything. So Correct. Correct. You want to be careful. Um, moving on to the police report, May of 2020, I'll just give you the, the uh, moving summonses were six, total calls were 131, and parking summonses were 19. Um, highway Department report, June of 2020. Uh, Marcus, in there, there's a review of the stairs and bathroom at Lens Cove. I'm not sure if Bob Wheeler is on the phone. If not, if you would like to um, sure. that. Sure. Yep, yep, sure. Um, there was a uh, – I sent the village board some pictures and some recommendations from um, Bob. He looked at replacing the wood steps with wood steps versus stone. Uh, the prices are shocking. Uh, just to let, and let the board know and the public who's watching, that's not a surprise because when you go outside, you got to do prevailing wage. So that knocks up the price substantially. Um, so um, my recommendation, so as Bob, is I gave you a price for each step and which ones have to be removed and replaced. Um, and with the cost, it's a couple thousand dollars for, for the steps to be done. We could do everything in-house. Um, now that the, um, it's not like the DPW guys have a lot of work to do. Bob has actually been doing a lot of work since the recreation program's been closed. We don't have to work on the fields, and Bob has really been doing a lot. As everybody knows, that they're making a big difference in Lentz Cove. He's been cleaning up certain sections, and he tells me he could do a lot of his work in-house. So I want to try to get the opportunity to do as much work as possible this year. Hope, they're hoping that everything gets back opened up next year, and then it's more act active. Act active. Um, so I'm recommending to the village board to consider replacing the steps as recommended by Bob at the prices listed. And and um, I'm hoping to take the money out of the recreation fund. But we're actually talking about tearing everything out and replacing everything again. Uh, they're in pretty bad shape. And everybody has the reports in front of them. So I'm, I can answer any questions. I know Bobby's not on the call, but he is watching the meeting. Mm -hmm. I also, I, I also, we want to make sure it's safe. That's that's priority, but I also wanted to mention again, there is a $15 million community and environmental fund. I have put, and that's that's the fund that Entergy set up with the, the closure agreement, and I have put in a list of um, repairs um, that we can uh, do at Lens Cove. So um, I just I just want everybody to keep that in the back of their mind, you know, so we talked about the bathrooms a little bit. Um, so that 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 can be on the list too. So I, I know some things for safety reasons have to be done. I yes. get that, but I'm yes. not looking to do a whole new Lens Cove when we have access to free money. Yep, yeah, I, I think the idea is to get to take care of the safety issues, which is the steps to open them up for general access to everybody else. The bathrooms are closed, and they remain to be closed until we make a determination what you want to do with the bathrooms. Cheech, I think Cheech wants to ask a question. Cheech? Yeah, uh, yeah, Marcus, on the um, wasn't there two sets of steps that that there was a say, safety issue with, or was it four? Oh, oh, four. 
Oh, okay. I thought it was only two. The other ones were the stone ones that are uh, that are like uh, on a wall or something. Is that how that works? There's a, a, a state. Uh, if, you remember, if you have the picture, staircase number three uh, is is. Oh, okay. They're not they're not a safety concern, but they are rotted out. Uh, it's just yeah. it's just deteriorating in a way that it will become a safety concern in the near future. And again, I'm saying we have the the labor force really ready to do the work now. The park. It's being used, but not as much as it could be used in the future. So I want to take the opportunity to get it done. We have the manpower to do it, and we can do it in-house at a, at a greatly reduced price. Are, are all the stairs, all four stairs, are they all necessary, or are there any? We could that was my uh, next question. Uh, in fact, I did uh, the staircase one. He, he, he recommends to remove the staircase. Bring it back to the next. I think it was one of them he said they could remove and not replace. Okay. Yeah. Um, may I? The stair when you come in the driveway, there's a staircase on the right that goes up to the hill there, and there's a picture Correct. table or two up there. Nobody ever goes up there. That staircase, uh, to answer your question, Rich, that staircase can be eliminated. Okay. Right. It, yep. it doesn't get used. It's not worth spending the time and effort to re right. replace. Anybody that wants to go up on that hill can climb up, just walk up the grass. So that, you know, That's true. Yeah. That's true. So yeah. I, would, I would eliminate that staircase. The, mm -hmm. the staircase that goes from the parking lot down to the handicap parking lot is not in terrible shape, and I think that Bob could, should just do the uh, the maintenance, the the, the repair, any re repairs, some of the asphalt, the wood frames, asphalt, and it has sunk in. He could do, he could work on that, and the staircase that's all the way in, going out towards the point. Is also only one one or two steps that really need work. He can do the work on those two: the one all the way out by the point, and the one that's going from the handicap lot to the regular parking lot. This, there's another staircase that goes up to a very pretty area. That's the one that's in the worst shape. And even though it's expensive, I would still not be opposed to doing those in stone and paying for it out of the rec funds. The repairs and maintenance, I don't, I would be opposed to taking out of the rec fund. The rec fund is not intended for maintenance and repairs, uh, but I would, I would, if maybe see if we can um, do that one in stone. It's in a very pretty setting, and if we can take that one out of the rec fund, that would be my thought. Do the one stone step, repair, have Bob repair two, and pull out the one up front. How much was that again? I'm sorry for that that one set that you're seeing. Uh, ten, twelve. Uh, I, yeah. I, I don't know if that one was ten or twelve because it's not as big as as. Um, uh, uh, every, just to let you know, every single any kind of replacement to stair, stairs runs anywhere between the lowest twelve thousand seven hundred to fifteen thousand. I don't know which one it is, but it's between twelve to fifteen thousand off of stone. Yeah, that's a lot. Why is, so Why is it so much? It's, it's prevailing wage. Bobby actually got two prices for each staircase from two different contractors, and they both were about the same price. Wow. They have to pay. They have to pay prevailing wage. Um, that's the part that that a lot of a lot of contractors, if they do pay prevailing wage, it's going to be very expensive. You're going to pay forty, fifty percent more expensive than what you do in your own house. Um, so in other words, uh, that's and that's required on this. So so they would bill us that, but do you think that's what they'd actually pay their guys? Yes. Well, they have they they were they're required under state law to pay their employees prevailing wage, including you know what the benefit wage would be in salary for that job. Because it's probably about three times what I uh, what I pay to have some stone step done by one of those contractors. I agree. I agree. So, uh, so what I can do is, if, if the board is okay with moving forward, let me get Bob to fine tune the numbers, and as long as we're in the, in the direction of going that direction, then I can send everybody an email and, and get like a quick little yeah. response from everybody can, before we do anything. You can definitely pull out that front staircase, just eliminate it. Yeah. Mm -hmm. yeah. Okay. Well, I'll talk, you know, we'll talk to you about it. Nick, I know, I know what you're saying, too, but to eliminate people from going up there, maybe we need to take the picnic table off the top so that it will have to, yes. entice them to, you know, go up the hill. That will have to come yeah. yeah. Yeah, there's no reason to have them up there. I, I've never seen anybody up there. No. 
Okay. Um, I do want to I do want to say something to explain to whoever's listening. Um, the money that is being talked about being spent is not coming out of our budget. Um, the, we have money in a recreation fund. I believe, um, Marcus, it's approximately two hundred thousand dollars. Correct. That we've gotten over the years um, through developers that have to pay um, pay into a recreation fund. So this type of money, understand, is we're not spending taxpayer dollars if we decide to do this okay um while we're on lens cove i i have to have a discussion with the board um this year has been a very difficult time over at lens cove um it started a couple of months ago um when i was doing one of my daily drives through the village i went into lens cove and was quite amazed that the parking lot was completely full there were approximately 50 cars and um, a lot of people there, and uh, a lot of people in the field there. Um, now, remember, we're, we were still pretty deep into COVID-19 in the field, playing soccer, uh, not social distancing, no masks. Um, I called the police department at that time, and the people had to leave. Um, but as I was there, lots and lots of garbage all over the place. So um, I went back to the board, and the board, we discussed this, and the board decided they were going to buy new garbage cans. And what seems to be drawing people over there, I mean, it's a nice park. It's on, on the river, and, and we're always happy to see that people are using it. But what we're seeing more and more, um, the Buchanan residents would not be leaving garbage there. Um, they wouldn't be leaving it a mess. Um, there was somebody that was caught at one point of just bringing their big bag of household garbage and just dropping it right by one of our garbage cans. Fortunately, a Buchanan resident happened to be there, saw that, got caught, and um, they, were, they were spoken to about that. Um, I had a complaint from a village resident today who sent me an email, um, very upset that the park looked like that because of the garbage. Um, she did not understand that, you know, the village was working on that and that we also had ordered new garbage cans. Um, we've had a discussion uh, about different things going on over there, and there was a discussion about a concern of a fire eventually in there because the people that are mostly going there are going to fish there. They're going in through Tropiano Trail, and from there they're scooting all over different parts of the park. Excuse me. One second. And sorry. And... Um, leaving their garbage, leaving their garbage within the woods. And I was very concerned about a fire in there because they're also putting fires in there and cooking their fish. So it was last week, Marcus called me. It was about 7 o'clock in the evening, told me there was a fire over there. And, yes, there was a fire over there. And the Burplank Fire District uh, was there, the Burplank Fire Department, because it is their district. That whole strip of land, Entergy, right through Lens Cove, is the Verplank Fire Department's area. So it's Nick knows, um, Marcus, Stephanie, myself. Um, it's, it's rugged terrain there. It is very difficult to get in there. They're, they couldn't even get their four-wheel drive car in there, the, the vehicle, the ATV. And um, fortunately, somebody, as they were leaving, and now this is dusk, as they were leaving, saw that there was something smoldering. So fortunately, that person caught that. Otherwise, it would have been a huge problem. We, it was, it's been very dry. Um, that's all brush there. It's all old brush. And to fight that fire would be very difficult. So it, it just seems that more and more we seem to be having problems there. Um, I, I, my thought, honestly, I'll be, uh, you know, I don't mind other people using it, but the people that seem, the group that seems to be using it lately is not very considerate of the park, not very considerate of the village. We shouldn't be having to pick up people's garbage. We shouldn't be having to put out fires. Um, we also had a situation that the cars were being parked there overnight. People were actually walking through those woods and staying overnight. So I spoke to Eric, our police chief, and I said, um, our parks close at dusk. And my concern was somebody was going to get hurt back there walking in that terrain in the dark. 
falling off a cliff, going in the water, somebody getting hurt. So the police department handled it, and now we don't have that issue. Um, we put signs up. Um, we got that under control, but there was no reason for people to be walking in those woods 24-7, staying overnight. So uh, I, you know, I know we talked about it last uh, at our workshop about stopping the, um, the fishing there. Um, I, that's, that's an option. Um, the other thing is, which I found kind of interesting, um, when I did stop over there that one time with the 50 cars, what I saw were the DEC, two of the DEC officers going in, checking on license. So it is not fishing season now. So no one should be fishing. But when I went over there yes, a couple days ago, there were no cars. But what I noticed is people are very smart. What I noticed is a car pulled in and dropped off three guys with fishing poles, and then they walked into the woods. So I don't know. I mean... If people were just not leaving a mess, not causing a problem, you'd go, okay, that's, that's okay. But it's not fair for our highway guys to have to pick up that extent of garbage. And they've been good. They have actually been staying on top of it. So I, I have to say our garbage men have been great. They go over there and, and they're, they're taking care of it. But there's so much garbage by Monday morning. It's, it's all over the place. And yes, we, we bought better garbage cans, bigger garbage cans, but why are we doing this? You know, this is a village of Buchanan Park. We have never accepted any money from the state, from federal. So there's been no grants that have ever come in there. This is a village of Buchanan taxpayer park. So I just, I, we just need to get this under control because it just seems to be spiraling here. And it's just not fair to the residents. Uh, may, may I? Sure, absolutely. Um, I think the two biggest problems are the fires and the garbage. Mm -hmm. The fishing is a problem, but it's not. They're going out onto the energy property. So here I have a few thoughts. First of all, we need to accept, get signs up saying no fires. Make that clear and, and establish a fine, a hefty fine for it. Mm -hmm. We need to work with energy and maybe, like Chief suggested, the... Um, having a minimum wage security guard, but maybe we can get energy to have somebody, you know, because the fires are a real problem <laughs> and they are just breaking branches off of living trees to light their fires. They're not always being careful about where they get their wood. Um, mm -hmm. I, as a Buchanan resident, do hike in there and I have met other people from Buchanan back in there. Um, at least one or two people that you know, but I'm not going to mention names. Um, so there are people that are going out and enjoying that park the way I do. And another reason you're seeing more cars, aside from the people fishing, is that the, that the riverfront trail ends at our doorstep there, and so some people are parking to begin the trail going up towards Beekskill. Mm -hmm. that's, that's a part of the parking. It's not 50 cars worth of people out there fishing. Um, uh -huh. So I think maybe we... Um, need to ban the fishing. We don't have to tell them where the Buchanan Park ends and energy property begins. Just put up a sign saying no fishing. Right. Lens Cove Park, no fishing. Nobody's, you know, it, it, not too many. I don't know how many of them are going to go on GPS and figure out that the park ends there and the, the rest is energy property. I think, I think putting up a sign, no fishing, putting up a sign for no fires and establishing a, a, a pretty serious fine um, would be good and also trying to uh, and seeing if we can get energy to have somebody a security guard that can you can come in there by boat by the way I don't know if energy oh, yeah. Has, yeah, I know that yeah but there's a couple of beach areas you could pull in by boat and walk right up where they go fishing um, it really is beautiful back in there and um, um, you know uh, but also, they're fishing illegally. It's nothing to do with fishing season. Fishing season is for people that follow the rules. Huh. You go to the Hudson, you're going to catch something or other, even if it's not stripers. Even you know, and then at striper season is designed to control the population, and but not kill the population. The people that are going out there are getting around the regulations by fishing. I don't know what the season. Is. Maybe there's something you're illegally can catch all year. I don't know what the rules are. 
But if there's a catch limit, they're getting around it by cooking it. So they never, you know, they're never coming out of there with six fish because they've had lunch and dinner already. Mm-hmm. Um, so, um, and, you know, the, 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 the Huck Finn part of me is like, gee, that's great. But realistically, I think we have to ban the fishing, um, definitely ban the fires, first and foremost. Have to ban the fires, and we have to try to get some support from Entergy to enforce um, the fishing and fi- fires on their property. You know, we don't want Entergy to shut down the whole property so you, so somebody can't walk there. Mm-hmm. They've always allowed people to follow the trail along the water, but but um, whatever it takes, they have to. We have to see if they can get involved with us on the fires, and uh, the fishing goes along with that. So, so let me ask. So, so let me ask one question. So, Stephanie, do we have do we have to write under our code to enforce those regulations, or do we have to cha- uh, add that to our code? I think we have to add that what they're talking about specifically. But I mean, I could review it. I mean, you have the right to do it. I just don't know yeah. whether you've done it before. Yeah, and the no fires is the is the biggest no, no fires. Yeah, that that's is a huge. potentially yeah. disastrous situation. We need to get a sign up there, right, as soon as possible, and and uh, you know, uh, with a you know, like a five hundred dollar fine. Or something. But that, but that's a that, but that's a question. We have to the I get the village board has to set the fine uh, for yeah, the yeah. Uh, you have for, to set the fine. Yeah, I made so. a motion that we set a fine of five hundred dollars for lighting a fire in Mexico Park. You can so do that by that. resolution, by the way. You can amend your fee schedule and do that by resolution if that's what you want to do. Yeah, Stephanie. Um, yeah. But um, I mean, we're not going to be able to enforce that unless you put mm-hmm. clear signs up that say that that's not allowed. Correct? Yeah. Yes. Okay. Yeah. Okay. Absolutely. Got to notice. Yeah. You have to the signs. I mean, it have seems be... like it would be obvious, but hey, I guess not. No. No. I mean, mm-hmm. that's. I mean, I, I know, like, you can't tell somebody you can't trespass. And if there's no sign, then right. I, there's you know there's no warning, and then you you have nothing to go on. The same thing with the no dump, a no dumping sign should be put up there as well. No yeah. dumping, no yeah. fishing, yep. no fires. But how is this going to get enforced? Yeah, how, how you got you got to catch them in the act. Yeah, I mean, yeah. you know, see that's the thing. I mean, somebody could catch six fish. They could they could they could uh, they can eat them. They can leave the bones in the on the floor. Before anybody even knows that happened. Mm-hmm. Well, that's why you made your suggestion, right, about having somebody there, maybe, to try oh, to yeah, enforce yeah. some of this. Uh, that, that was my next. Um, that was my next next thing. If you get somebody in there that could, um, you know, walk around to keep an eye out for it, give them a give them a radio, and they'll have a contact person here in Buchanan that they could notify, and then that person will notify the police department that somebody is breaking the law in there, and they can get there and take care of. It. But don't. Yeah, what- Signs up that says uh, no parking and no uh, uh, no trespassing after a certain time or something like just, that. Yeah, just, just. Close. yeah, close at mm-hmm. dusk. Yeah, yeah, um, that's for the no trespass. But the dumping, fishing, and fires, you can leave that all day, right? Am I right or wrong? <laughs> you know, uh, yeah, the garbage and the fires is uh, well, in theory, ever. it's when they're in the park, but it certainly applies if they're in, illegally in the park at night as well. Yeah, but if, there's no, if, if this is in fishing season and there shouldn't be any fishing going on... Yeah, well, the fishing season that we're referring to is the striper season, Dwayne, and I'm not exactly sure what the... It's expired, because I talked to Bob. This, the, the, that season has, has, has ended. Yeah, that's over. But can you fish for... Can you go in there to catch carp any time of year? You know, there's lots yeah. of other... That are not as a design. The stripers are like the creme de la creme, I guess. Uh, but there's other junk fish you can catch anytime. I don't know what the regulations are. You know, there's like other kinds of uh, bass and carp, and uh, I don't know what else they can there. Uh, but people eat what you call junk fish? Well, <laughs> junk fish, I, what I mean by junk fish, you know, fish like carp. I don't even know what that is. good, okay. but people catch them and eat them. Oh, okay. okay. I mean, good. Part of the fishing thing is just fishing, not necessarily eating the fish, but just the idea of people getting out to 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 want to fish. I yeah. I don't. Is I, there a problem? So, with, 
the amount of people that are back there and how, how we might be able to backdoor that into the COVID-19 thing in terms of social distancing or something? No, I think we need to do something permanent. And COVID might be over in two or three years. Yeah. Yeah. So, I'll say so, two or three months. But anyway, um, no, but the whole thing with the, um, um, is that they're, they're, they're catching fish and then they're, they're, they're cooking it and eating it, right? Isn't Correct. That, and, 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 and leaving the garbage behind, yes. Yeah, that's what I'm saying. They're they're, they're fishing. They're bur- they're burning it, and then they're leaving the, the the you know the bones or whatever else behind and and everything. I mean, is it okay for them to go fishing and take the fish home with them? And they well, yes, but it's harder to draw the line there. I think. Um, you know, I mean, we could do that and just go after the whole fire thing. But also have maybe have Entergy. We still, I think, either the sec- a security guard or Entergy. Yeah. Uh, somehow we need some help going in there. The DCA guy goes in once. I don't know where's he going during striper season. He was going in yes. maybe a couple of times a week. Yes, correct. Something like that. What about one of our police officers? Could could one of ours walk once a week? Somebody walk in there randomly. I don't want to put anybody in in there by themselves, and that's what I mentioned to the DCA. There's a lot of people in there. I don't know who's in there. And I, you know what, and like I said, Nick, you know as well as anyone, the terrain there is rough. And I, I don't want one of our officers going out on. on Fair enough. I got you. Sure. <laughs> I mean, I almost, I, I almost did myself in when uh, Stephanie Marcus and I took a walk <laughs> through there in the spring. So, <laughs> Woo, wasn't good. Yeah. So we need to uh, pursue uh, uh, Chief's idea of, Trying to see if Energy would, would, you know, pay for someone to uh, to be able to do that. Well, we send a security guard in alone, but we wouldn't send a police officer in alone. No, no. Just... But if you do send, no, no. If you do send a security person in there, they're not going to. They're not going to. They're, they're not going to take any kind of action. They're just going to observe and report it. And report it. Like I mean, you, if you okay. were. Security person walking, you see somebody starting a fire. You're not going to get into their faces and say, "Put the fire out." You're going to notify the police, say somebody's starting a fire here, and let the police come and handle it. You follow what I'm saying? Yeah. You well, maybe to- we do. Maybe we do uh, put the uh, you know remote cameras that are concealed somewhere, mm-hmm. so if there's fires, we can see it. We, we could put um, wireless cameras out there, out there. Yes, we could. Put a, cel- put a cellular wireless camera. Yes. And then you see if you see a fire. Now, do any of the local police have a boat? Probably just peak skill to have a boat that can come in there by boat. But you I know, think Fairplay has a boat. Fairplay yes. absolutely does. Yeah, the yeah, fire Fair department. Yep. Fire department. Oh, yep. so yep. If there's a fire. You would send the fire department in. Well, it's the fire. I'm talking about a campfire, <laughs> not a forest fire. Well, if there's a campfire, the terrain is that bad and you can't reach by walking into it and you can get there through a fireboat, that's what you do. So um, I, so I just want to move uh, move this forward. So do we want to put on this on the agenda for the next meeting regarding a fine and outlawing, a, you know, fi- uh, no, you know the, what we discussed, the fires, no fishing, and a fine for each one? Do you want to put that on the agenda for the next meeting? And no dumping. Let's let's start with the fires, a sign, and a fine. Because that's like, a, I think that's, I don't know if I'd call it low-hanging fruit, but that's a definite. I, would everyone agree we have to ban having fires out there? The only reason I'm bringing it up, again, is every sign costs money, and every time you add, you're going you're gonna to replace signs and replace them. I'm just saying if, if we're going to do everything, I'd rather have one sign and list every one of those items. There you go. Then have to throw away signs and then replace them. So I'm just trying to not, to, not to waste taxpayers' money more than once if we can help it. But, you know, wait, Mark, wait, wait. Not wasting don't, don't we want to talk to a key about trying to get them to buy into to some of this because – it, it, it's partially their land at anyway. Agree. That's it. I, I, yeah, I'll give, them a, I'll give them a call, and then we can put it on yeah. the agenda for discussion yeah. for the next meeting. We can decide what, which way. We can put it on the workshop for the next meeting before we have that discussion. Okay. Yeah. I, I, look, I don't think a, a one sign would cost that much. I think we should get one sign at the start of the trail that says no fires. Exactly. Bilingual. That should be a bilingual sign. 
just, you know, I don't think, how much does the sign cost? 50 bucks, 40 bucks? I think, I think the, the value is uh, important. I think we get that sign up and we get a, set up a public hearing to establish a fine. Okay. Well, I think, uh, uh, Stephanie, uh, we got, we're yep. saying no fires. Does that require a public hearing? No. No. I think so, that's a health and safety issue that you could do yeah. immediately if you needed to, especially if you have noticed that this is what's going on there. Yeah. I mean, if, uh, do we have notice that people are doing open burns and fires? Well, oh, yeah. Well, that fire, was, yeah the fire department was in there. there. You can see where they have the fires. If you walk out there, there's fire pits all over. All over the place, yep. So the question would be, do you want to, shoot, you want to say no fires, we get order signs tomorrow, set a fine of... Two hundred fifty dollars, three hundred, whatever you guys want, and get that out of, and do that now. Or you want to wait for the, for the discussion in the workshop, and I'll talk to Entergy about it as well. I think, I think we, we need to decide quickly for what we want on those signs, and I think we need to get them up quickly because I'm not looking to have another fire in there. It's not only dangerous because of the brush, but it's dangerous for the people that have to go in there and are going to have to fight that fire. It, it's agree, it's agree, one hundred and fifty percent. And as Stephanie said, it's a health, health and safety issue. I think we just act on that right away. We Let's do it. More. We could discuss the subtleties of uh, how to deal with fishing and garbage and what's legally, what you can legally catch and blah, blah, blah. You know, yeah, and by the way, by the way, open burns in New York, uh, the DEC is prohibited by law. I mean, you know, they do, they do some, you can have a campfire if it's less than two feet high or whatever it is. I, I haven't memorized it, yeah. but I mean, it's prohibited anyway. I would put the signs up, make the fine, put the signs up. Yeah. I think Westchester County has open the open burn laws too, Steph. I think there's yeah, it's just yeah. not you know, and we know about it. We should put it up. I don't think you need yeah. a public hearing to to protect. I, I think you know. I agree. And what is the fee so we what, can put that on there? Yep, what's the fine that you guys want? What's the fine? Five hundred. Five hundred. Five hundred just for fires. Now we're just putting a sign up for no fires. Yes. Yes. We're not putting the no fishing and no uh, no la la la. No dumping, no dump, no, no fishing, no, no dumping. dumping. Yeah, I think if you're going to do a sign, get it all done on the one sign. I agree, Teresa. No, I don't agree because then we'll have to read all these multi items. Let's make it one big bold. No fires. This is serious. Fires and then maybe you could do the dumping and the fishing on the same sign if you chose to. With that's what I sign. think. You know, okay. that's what I would put it all on one. Didn't we put up some no-dumping signs somewhere over there? Yeah, there are signs about the garbage already, and there's signs about no oh. dogs. Uh, and there's signs about no uh, the oh, overnight yeah. parking. No dogs. Yeah. I'm, so, I, hate to, I hate to be like this, but if people would just do the right thing, then we wouldn't have to have signs up. But obviously that's not happening. And so if everybody did the right thing, you wouldn't need laws. That's true. <laughs> that's true. true. Yep. Sure. But I think that takes us back to uh, enforcement, though. Yeah, yeah, it does. Absolutely. It absolutely does. Yeah. But you could start by scaring the shit out of them. Oh, look, another meeting and I use a four-letter word. Stuffing. Scaring the stuffing. Hey, look, if I hold up paper, it makes me disappear. <laughs> <laughs> this is Cindy. Can I break in? Sure, absolutely. Okay, so I just had a resident call, and um, he's very concerned that you shouldn't really ban fishing for village residents there, you know? No, a resident can come in and get a permit and no fee. There you go. Just a permit that says I'm a village resident and I can I can fish here. Did I so miss that I, part no, where I walked away? I didn't hear no, that. No, no, you didn't, Cindy, but I'm glad whoever that was, thank you for calling in. You're okay. absolutely right. We should not be discouraging the village residents from using that. Right. Him and um, his daughter fish every night, but they just uh, fish right uh, by the uh, boat launch. You know, oh, they don't okay. Come out, you know, far, so they would just like to make sure they could still come and do that. That's fine. Just have them come in and and get like a note or or something from Village Hall. That's fine in case they're questioned. That's all, you know. But what we're doing is we're trying to alleviate a problem that seems to just keep building and building. That's further because, on. Okay. Yeah. Other communities, they're not allowing people to congregate because of the COVID, and they're being chased out of their other parks because of that. Right. So they've at our our place but no we're not looking you know we're just looking we're not looking to hurt any of the village residents you know why it's their park it's their park yeah. okay so i don't want to get this straight so tonight we just talk about tonight we just talk about the, the fires themselves right yeah. that's all we're going to outlaw or we're going to outlaw 
the fishing and the dumping. Oh, the dumping, I think we got to do anyway, but there yeah. is no fine schedule. I would, if I can just butt in, I would wait. Let's have enough further discussion about the fishing issue because I mm -hmm. want to look a couple of things up before we just jump okay. on that. Okay. Okay. So, yeah, so people want if people want to fish and bring their fish home. That's fine, as long as they don't cook it there. Well, that's but we're getting the crowds of people going in because of the fishing. Mm, you know, okay. and, and, and I that's think, related to the garbage as well. Yeah, I, I think that, yeah. That if we if it we can get out of control there, it's a fishing permit for the park, or or make it you know let Buchanan residents first. In general, I think the park should be open to. Local people. That exactly what I want to look at. I, I really need I to look at whether or not we can say nobody, no outsiders can fish. Because if if yeah. the issue is, you know, fishing or danger because they're walking in places, that that applies to the village residents as well. So I just want to do a little research on it and okay. figure it out. Sure. The, I like no the matter, idea of coming to the village for like a, a permit, you yeah. know, or something, because then <clears> you <throat> keep track at least. Like you get an ID, you keep track of who might be out there at whatever time or limit the amount of people at one time. But let me do a little research, and I'll get back to you by the workshop. Okay. And then I think we should – so uh, as far as the buyers, I think – Marcus, what does the sign cost? They don't cost that much. What are they? No, 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 no that, that's fine. That's fine. So what I'm saying is – the fire sign? Yeah, so we, uh, so we can – if the board agrees to, we can pass a motion um, – I don't know, it's saying, uh, authorized to order the sign. They put a fine of five hundred dollars per occurrence. Yeah. And we get we it up. Is that too much, or do we want to change? Is that okay? Five hundred? Is that okay with everybody? Well, before that, though, I think some consultations with uh, Intergy are are necessary uh, on that part of the uh, equation. Um, well, that should be part of it too. But I think just. Banning fires and getting up a sign as soon as possible, I think, would be yep. the right way to go. Okay. And then we can work out all the details of the other stuff. We need to get in touch with that, the GI, like, you know, you know, to maybe help enforcing in there. Yeah, enforcing and aim signs. Uh, Stephanie, is there any reason 500 sounds excessive? Should we start uh, any more that you know of? Okay, <laughs> well, perfect. You know, okay. Not to me. You can set the fine. You can set the fine, but it goes to court, and it's up to the judge where Correct. it goes from there. So, well, can we write the law as a mandatory fine if you're caught with the fire? I think it should it's be a mandatory fine. A, I don't think you give much. Safety. It's a safety issue at this point. It is. It it is. is. It That's got to happen right away. Yeah. I think. But she wants to say something. Yeah, th th that whole thing, that's, <laughs> just that whole thing. I mean, just looking from you know from from a law enforcement point of view, um, I, I would just um, just get um, Erickson put on this also, mm -hmm. because you know when you're dealing with with outside fires and 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 yeah. you're, you're saying that there's no fires allowed and somebody that that's almost borderline arson if something goes wrong. Yeah, you understand what I'm saying? Yep. Yeah. I, you, I, you know, I, you see, and that's what the thing is. Now you're taking it up to a whole different level. You see all these forest fires that go on in these counties and these towns, yeah. and it's basically that somebody lit up a campfire and they didn't put it out, and then they're looking for them. Yeah. And that's, well, that's and, a, I mean, it's severe, but, you know, we just want to cover all bases with that. Well, well I think it takes some planning on it on the police chief's part because, um, you know, even whether we set a fine or not, with fires being lit in there, a catastrophe could happen. And he, yep. he you know, and maybe he already has knows what his first step is. You know, whether it's, uh, mm -hmm. you know, if it gets really bad, you got to start bringing. You got to get in fire boats. You got to get in helicopters. And then is it well, a safety issue? issue. I think he relies on on the Verplank Fire Department. They couldn't get in. The last um, at that fire, they had to actually manual. They had to walk in down the path with their packs to put it out. So thank God it was it was small yet, but they can't get in there. Yeah, I think yeah. that's also a discussion that has to be had with Entergy that there has to be some type of an access road. Agreed. So God forbid that happens in the future. There's some way to get in there. Yeah. Fire, what's called, what they called in the old days a fire road. <laughs> that's right, that's right. Yeah, well, meanwhile, are we okay with spending 40 bucks or whatever it is for some, Just put the fine on there, even if we haven't approved it yet, and we'll, 
and, and, uh, well, you can make I, a mo- I mean, well, that's right. What are we at? We're in a meeting. We're not in a workshop, right? So that's right. It's a meeting. By resolution, you can resol- You can do a resolution tonight or a motion um, to pass the resolution just amending your fee schedule and adding the fine. That's it. Okay. Done. So I, I, make a, I make a motion that we establish a fine of $500 for lighting uh, fires uh in in lens any well what should we say lens you know because the, we want to say lens go park or do we want to say uh prop fires off of you know outside of your own backyard barbecue in lens how do we word this? uh yeah because a lot of the a lot of the fires like the open pit laws are already covered in yeah they are code and I think the DEC as Stephanie had mentioned yep. so I think a lot of that is already there but what our concern is the Lens Cove area I think our two big concerns is, is the fire and the dumping mm-hmm. um, so then we're fi- uh, uh, fine for $500 for lighting fires at Lens Cove Park the backyards are already covered and that's really the only property we're concerned about here right no um, and we amend our uh, move that we establish five hundred dollar fine and amend our fee schedule accordingly, mm-hmm. and uh, and and post a sign at the uh, start of the trail at Let's Go, uh, indicating that there are no fires allowed and what the fine is. Beth, I don't. I, and can we do a little what's going on in the area type of analysis as it relates to this? What do you mean? See what other communities are doing. Exactly. But I, I, I don't. I'm not sure. I'm not sure if they're having issues like we have at Lens Cove. I think we're just trying. Yeah, I'm to trying to like Blue Mountain and Georgia's Island and, and Croton Point Park. These are all either county or state parks, and uh, and you know they have they have some areas with those uh, metal barbecue things that you could light a fire in. Uh, but there's no open fires allowed anywhere else. Right. Around. That's county or state. It doesn't cover our park. Having an open fire, you know, in the woods or outside of one of those barbecue pits is uh, is not allowed. So right. I, I don't know who else to compare to. You know? I mean, it co- I think it covers you, and I think it's a good deterrent. If nothing yeah. else, you know, and I think, Marcus, what color is this sign going to be, bright red or something? Like, make it really obvious so people can see it. Yeah, I'll work, I'll work with Bob tomorrow to uh, create a sign for that. That's fine. Yeah. Yeah, I hate to have all these kind of signs in parks, but like I said, yeah. people are not be careful. Uh, not behaving, you know. Be so, and and, and it has to be a bilingual. The village. Yeah, Got definitely. Bilingual sign. Oh, yeah. good idea. Yep. Um, you know what? Going back to that resident also, we also have, um, I know our, our, our uh, rec supervisor isn't around, but we also have, I, you know, Village Buchanan ID cards too, um, recreation cards. So, um, but we'll, you know, we'll, we'll discuss it further. But I just thought because of the situation and the fire last week, I, I just yep. thought that this really needed to be addressed. Okay, so uh, Nick, pa- Nick um, passed the uh, resolution. Anybody want a second so we can move forward? Made a, made a motion, a second. To do what? To, to put the sign up at Lens Cove and the $500 um, uh, fine. fine. Add, to add that to our fee schedule. Oh, okay. I'll, I'll second that. Mm-hmm. All in favor? Aye. 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 Okay. And by the way, while we were talking, I looked at our fee schedule, on, uh, you know, just to be sure there is nothing in there already. Okay, good. Okay. Thank you. Have you seen me good? <laughs> that works really well. <laughs> um, I also just want to quickly mention I have spoken to Entergy when that fire happened. I spoke to them, and they have on their property put no trespassing signs up. So There you go. Just so oh, they know. have? Yes, they have. Yeah. Um, so moving along, building department report. Oh, no, wastewater treatment plant um, for June 2020. There was a DEC inspection report. Um, did very well with that. Got all satisfactory. 
So that is really good news. Um, I'd like to thank uh, Todd Travis, who um, is our, our lead person over there. He's doing a great job. Um, so we're, thank God, knock on wood, things are, are working well over there. Um, moving on to the next, um, the building department report, June 2020. Uh, attorney's report, Stephanie. Um, hi. Okay, so most of the things I have are going to be in executive session. However, I wanted to give a brief update on the project from Benchmark. They came in with a PowerPoint at the last workshop. I think you all know regarding the multi-family use over at what we know as the Griffin property. Um, so we got communication from Brian Cohan. He was on the Zoom meeting. Um, and basically, you know, he asked the board um, through the mayor and Marcus, the administrator, you know, what your intentions were, did you want to move forward? And in that communication, he acknowledged a couple of things. First, that they're proposing a five-story building, two stories built into the hill. So that's a height variance or a height, you know, we would, we would be... You, but you would have to amend the zoning because this use isn't allowed. It isn't permitted there. But as part of that, you would have a different height um, than we do in most of the other parts of the village. And also, um, there's some wetlands activity that was also approved through the prior project. What concerns me is that, you know, I think myself, I've had a couple conversations with, with these folks, and I have made it as clear as I could possibly make that we have a prohibition against disturbing any um, steep slopes 30% grade or more. Um, and what his communication seemed to say is that Insight and Engineering, you know, thought that they can't avoid the steep slopes entirely, but they believe they could minimize them and meet, in quotes, reasonable permit standards within the village code, end quote. So I would just like the board to know that and remind you that once you take an application, once you say there's a go here, bring in the application, you have to see it through. You as a board do not ever have to entertain anything to, to change a zone. Um, so I would like to just hold it off till we could get a little bit further information as to what exactly um, they are proposing. So I spoke to the village engineer today, and uh, he has not heard from Insight Engineering. Insight, I believe, also had the Bill Walter project, and so they're well aware of the code. Um, and so I just kind of wanted to caution and get it out there that that is absolutely prohibited. We have prohibited it for other applications. We have gone after people who tore down the steep slopes. And so if anybody is contacted or asked, I think you need to tread lightly until we get do not accept an application is my, is my advice, until we get some real clarification on exactly what it is they're looking to do. And I understand from a developer's perspective, you know, they don't want to spend $50,000 doing engineered plans and all of that um, before we say no thank you. And so, but I do think I'm trying to work with them to, to come to an agreement that that isn't, in fact, what they're going to be asking for before you agree to take it on. Because once you agree, like I said, you're off and running for another year. Um, so Marcus had some conversations with, I think, the gentleman, Mr. Cohen, and I, Marcus and I have had conversations, and I kind of wanted to put it out there and let you know where it is. And, and one of the things that um, Mr. Cohen said was um, his bigger concern is the height and the destiny. Uh, if the village board has a major concern with the height and destiny, he said he needs to have that height and destiny to make it work. If that's a problem, that's a no-go. He can understand then he would like to move forward someplace else and not move forward with the project at all here. Um, so, and then regarding the um, steep slopes, he said, if you give me what your drop dead is in regards to 30%, 15% or something like that, which you have a discussion with Stephanie as well, he said that he can work with, but the height and the density he needs, if that's a no-go, then he doesn't want to move forward, spend any money at all, and then he's told Mr. Griffin that this project is dead. So he wants to know from the board if that seems reasonable to the board, not approval, not not a green light, but if that's acceptable, he would like to put money to escrow and then start working with Stephanie and George and our planner to to fine-tune his proposal. Um, but he doesn't want to spend that money if the village board doesn't feel comfortable with the height and the density. Those are the two major items that he brought to my attention. 
Uh, the height and depth uh, are the first two things that jump. Are we going to be discussing this on in the executive session? So we're, we're, we're being repetitive here now. We're going to discuss this in the executive session. Are we? Right. We're not discussing it now. No, we're going to discuss it now. This this doesn't um, this isn't contractual employee okay. or, or yeah, I'm sorry or anything like that. Yeah, I'm sorry. Executive session. Yeah, no, that shouldn't be in in an okay. executive session. Okay. Well, what I was going to say is that the height and density are the things that jump out at me. Um, you know, it's uh, it seems like a lot, and I can't quite. You know, I'm not quite sure. It's hard for me to judge. Um, you know, if, if, if the, but that's that's the first thing that jumps out. Mm -hmm. You know, um, it's twice as many units as we had uh, approved there last time. Um, so I suppose it, it a lot of that depends on the breakdown of uh, if it's a hundred units, how many of them are, are a studio in one bedroom? Because you know, if it's a hundred two bedroom, that's a whole lot more people than if it's seventy. Mm -hmm studio in one bedroom and, thir and 30, you know, so the breakdown has to be looked at. Um, I'm not exactly sure that I'm opposed to that number of units, but that's the first thing that jumps out at me, and, mm -hmm. and I could see why he would want to know if that's, if that's a deal breaker for him. It is, uh, sure. I think oh, we need to it is. Get the, I think then we need to get the, did he give us a breakdown last time on the, on the number of, like, studio, one bedroom, two bedroom, three bedroom? Uh, I think what, what, he, no. what he asks for is the maximum height in our code is three stories or 35 feet. He wants five stories, 60 feet in height. And um, let's see, what is he saying here? He's not giving it. He does just say 100. There's 100 units. We allow 14 dwelling units per acre, and he is proposing 100 units. But I don't know how many acres he's using here. Yeah, the property is seven, but I, yeah. But mm -hmm. is it well, based I mean, on obviously there's wetlands, and then there's the steep slopes, and so some of this, this, this all sort of melts right. together in terms of what what your issues are. He definitely needs the stories because he needs a hundred units, mm -hmm. um, and the density, obviously, because you allow fourteen per acre. He's looking for a hundred units, so those two things. Uh, yeah. He yeah, but I, I think he, what he told me, what he told me on the phone was, if the board is dead set against the height and density, tell me now, and you know, and then I'll leave. But if there is an open mind for that discussion, that he's moving, willing to move forward. He just want to make sure that if the, if the, if the complex is way too, if the scope is too large for the feeling of the village board, no hard feelings, or we just go someplace else. Mm -hmm. Well, one thing I thought about it, uh, I mean, I'm not t against it totally yet, but I thought he said that there would be one and a half parking spaces per unit. I find that to be a little, up, you know, uh, that's not correct. You're certainly going to have to use more than one and a half spaces per unit. Mm -hmm. And a lot of people, ha most people have a car, or, you know, if it's a couple, each one's got a car, and if there's a kid involved, they may even have a car. So I just don't know where where the room would be to put all he wants to put. Personally, I thought the way, looking at the pictures, that it fit, even though it was the height was higher than what we have, and the units, but it seemed to fit in with the topography based on what he was showing us. I'm not totally against that. That being said, because it is off by itself, it's, it's not like we're going to, uh, in other areas, going to have a whole bunch of uh, five-story apartments. But that's just my opinion. Mm -hmm. The way the way I looked at it, it was it's on the outskirts of the village. <clears throat> it's in a an M1 zone, and the one of the energy buildings are. You know, the the one building, um, as you go in, I can't think of the name of what they call that building, but that's that's got to be four or five stories high. The administration building. The admi yeah. Well, yeah, that's the administration building, not the training building. So the admin building. So that's, you know, so I'm looking at comparable things, and then I'm thinking, well, on the other side of that, that steep slope, you have, a, you know, it, it's not like a residential area anyhow. So on the other side, you have the, the garbage, the carting company. You have our sewer treatment plant. So 
if you told me that there's somebody that wanted to do this in the center of the village or in our residential area, it would be a, no way. That's not happening. We're not, we're not changing like the small town USA feel of, of the, the, the village. You know what I mean? What we have going now. So we're no, not you start putting up high rises, but this is on the outskirts of the village. It's, it's on the border of Peekskill. It's, uh, you know, it's across from Entergy. Uh, you know, I, I, I haven't made a definite decision on it, but I'd be willing to listen about it. I'd be willing to listen. I'd like to learn a little bit more about the density per acreage. Yeah. Can and I make a suggestion? One or two bedrooms. I'd like to know what the, the mix Yeah, is. yeah. Can I make a suggestion? When they did the presentation, they, they had some um, renderings that they showed us yep. that are not the paperwork they gave us. Um, if we could get hold of them, those were like uh, aerial views showing the, you know, roughly proposed the scale of the building on the property, and there were brick levels which were residential, and there were there was like a different color um, facade that yeah, I think he talked about two lower levels that were parking right. built yep. into the hill. Yep. Yes. If we get those preliminary drawings just as a for visualization purposes, because depending on how you landscape, you can you can minimize the the visual impact of that building. Um, if, if you have a sidewalk there and there's a and there's trees and landscaping, you know it's all part of the equation. And if if we can get some of those renderings and get copies for the board, and if we could get like as Teresa just reiterated the breakdown of the apartments 100 apartments how many studios one bedroom two bedroom three bedroom mm -hmm. whatever the breakdown is yep if we can get that in, I agree. That mm -hmm. and, the, and, and the renderings for visualization mm -hmm. and then maybe we can um could sort of set it as a goal to decide if we want to entertain it forward at the next workshop Sure, I'll, I'll give him a call tomorrow, ask me to provide that information, and I'll get it to you as soon as I can, if he's willing to release it, yes. Yeah, we're telling we need the we need the visuals and we need the proper breakdown. Yep, no problem. Yep. Great. Sounds good. And 100 units could mean $200,000 more in the rec fund. <laughs> we and, the and, and, and taxes. And yeah. that's what I think. I think the focus is on our tax base. I yes. Think we need to look at things and, and, you know, how does it affect the village? How does it affect our tax base? You know, is it a positive for us? So, um, you know, we, we really, we have to really open our minds and, and look at things and yeah. all yeah. about the tax base. And then when the energy property yeah. comes along, we'll be having some discussions on yep. you know, what what will work for the village too so hopefully that opens up sooner um in the next couple of years so yep okay we have another yeah. and, Thank you. And, and i and i agree with teresa that you know because it's sort of an isolated property yep. it's not going to be you know it's not like something that's going to impact any of our um residential streets and you know there'd have to be a traffic study and, uh, and all but yep but yep. but yeah Okay, perfect. Thank you. Okay. Well said, Teresa. I'll I'll go with what you just said. That's perfect. Okay. Yep. We'll, we'll look at things. We'll get that information and we'll discuss it at the workshop. Perfect. Okay. Stephanie, are you done with the attorney's report? Yep. Everything else I have is executive session. Thanks. All right. Thank you. And, and Marcus, I understand you're next, but I understand the village got a certificate today. And um, I think we need to, to thank our Cindy, our uh, village clerk, for the great job that she did. Indeed. Hey, Marcus, could you explain what that certificate was um, that we, Village of Buchanan, got? We're not used to getting certificates, so we're very excited about this. Next time yeah, that to you. Yep, that certificate is... Um, it's provided by PERMA. PERMA is our workers' compensation insurance carrier. Um, you're required by state law and also work the workers' comp board to provide any information on any injuries within a certain amount of time. So, therefore, the insurance can actually cover the employee's injuries as well as also show the insurance company that we're not hiding any information. Uh, it, it's not given out 
to everybody. You have to meet the timeline. You have to complete all the documentation completely and be approved by Workers' Comp Board and also by PERMA. And I got to tell you, this is, I've, in all the places I've been, this has not been given away to any place, any place else I worked. And Cindy got it on behalf of the village. Uh, that also provides us uh, when they actually do our premium, they look at how we provide our information. And that also helps us keep our premium down at the same time. So it helps the employees. It helps the, it helps the village overall. So I got to thank Cindy for the fantastic job she's doing it, on top of everything else she does. Well, mm -hmm. if we're going to thank brag, you. we got one last year also. There you go. That's Cindy. I didn't see the one from last year. Oh, man. Thank you. Marcus wasn't here to, hi to, to, That's right. to highlight That's right. it. That's right. Yeah. Cindy's humble. She doesn't show us those things. Right, Cindy? Right. Exactly. Thank you. Okay, Marcus, what do you have for your report this evening? Well, hopefully a couple of things. I haven't been on the road, but hopefully they are paving Route 9A tonight. tonight. So. Uh, they were supposed to do it start last night, but they, were, they thought it was going to rain, so the contractor decided to hold off. Uh, the Wiltshire Avenue exit should be closed right now. Um, yeah. They were supposed to close as of 8 o'clock or 9 o'clock, uh, sorry, 9 o'clock to close the, the, uh, start the pavement. So I know Nick has been, Nick and the board has been looking for this for a very, very long time. So it's taking place. And then also there's a, a couple of locations that we have some specific issues on Route 9A. Uh, myself, George, and um, Bob met with the representative from the, from the, from the DOT, and we looked at certain other locations where um, we have some specific issues, and the DOT said they'll come back after the paving to take care of some of the drainage issues. So thank God that's moving forward. Yeah. Uh, um, relating to that, we're still waiting to hear back any, about the grant for the sidewalks around Route 9A. That's still pending. Uh, we're working with the DOT to get that approved as well. Uh, Marcus, can I just interrupt? So unfortunately, we have been pushing and, and trying everything possible to get the sidewalk done before the paving started. It, we, everything. I, I mean, I, I think the COVID situation held us up on a lot of it. Um, but unfortunately, we're still going to go, unfortunately or fortunately, we're still going to go through with the sidewalk. But after it's paved, there's going to be some digging up of a, a section of the road. So, um, but for safety issues, we just feel it's really important since we got the grant from the state to put the sidewalk in. It, it, we just, we just couldn't, it just, it was, just wasn't happening. Um, we tried everything to coordinate it, but it, they just said no. So, yeah. it, it, no, no problem. It, it was, it, again, trying to think outside the box. We talked to the same contractor that's doing the paving. They gave us a price for the sidewalk in. They were vetted by the state. The state approved it. We had an itemized list of what the cost would be. So we actually went to the state and said, why don't we use the same contractor? The price was less than the, than the grant award, which means the state would have saved money and the contractor would get it done. They came back and said, nope, you got to go out to bid separately. You have to do, start the process by, separately by itself. So it was very frustrating. But mm -hmm. after months and months of going back, I finally got an answer from them, and the answer was no. Yeah. So we have well, to do that separately. Yes. Yeah. Okay. Um, I know I mentioned this before, but I do have to mention it again. Um, as the board knows, we went, we did an RFP for insurance for insurance program. We actually got a new insurance broker. We actually saved twenty five thousand dollars, and we actually got a better coverage. Uh, we also got cyber insurance coverage we never had before, uh, and we also got them to work with us on the safety committee. And Cindy, another another hat that Cindy's wearing, it's a safety coordinator. <laughs> so she's wearing that hat as well um, to actually get as part of the safety committee. And again, uh, with the safety committee, that's part of the premium review on the on an annual basis. As soon as we have a safety committee, if anybody gets hurt, we review it, we report back. That's something the PERMA and the Workers' Comp Board is looking for as well. On the safety committee, it's every single department head, DPW, police, and we discuss that. And... Um, Cindy is going to be um, our safety coordinator, but the insurance carrier has been taking the lead role, making sure we meet all the mandates of PASH and the OSHA and make sure the training in place. In fact, they're going to do some training tomorrow for DPW. So um, thank God. I think we got a, a much better um, process now, I think. I think Cindy would agree. And we got insurance carrier that stays on top of everything. So, And we also save money at the same time. Um uh, I, I know I mentioned it at the last meeting, too. Um, we had a phone 
a five-year lease for our phones through LightPath. Um, we actually looked and the contract expired, so I looked at another vendor. I actually w were able to save $690 a month by switching to another vendor. Uh, we got brand new phones, and we also got higher bandwidth at the same time for the reduced cost. Um, that's both internet access and phone access. So that's been in place. I think, since, I think the staff is happy with the new phone system we got. It's a lot easier to use, um, and at the same time, we're saving almost $700 a month for that. For that, and for that oh, it's a month? It's not the total length of the contract? It's $700 a month? $700 a month. Wonderful. A month. Wonderful. Okay. So we're saving there. Uh, the other thing, just for general information, I don't know if everybody has heard, but the county has created a voluntary separation agreement due to the reduced, uh, reduced revenues the county is coming in. Uh, they, they were trying to avoid any layoffs or firing, so they set up a voluntary separation agreement. Any employee, which is not police and uh, correction is not being touched, but we're talking about regular, regular employees of the uh, CSEA members, office workers, management. If you work for the county, the county is providing $1,000 uh, uh, a year for each year of service. If, you, if they separate, and they have to separate by August 1st. It doesn't affect us, but I wanted you to know what was going on in the county as well. Um, the county says that if the number of people they have, if they voluntarily make this move, that the county will save about six mil, six point two or $6.3 million next year by doing this and not replacing those positions. So just want to let you know that this COVID um, and the economy is generally affecting the county very strongly, and George is trying to do the best he can and not have to fire anybody. So that's what's going on at the county. Um, so I think that's all I wanted to report. To Oh, uh, the other thing, I want to let you know, we actually worked, uh, there was a discussion a couple of minutes ago about looking at Blakely Avenue for some parking, if we could put some off-street parking. So we looked at the corner of Blakely Avenue there, and um, I think uh, we went there with George and Bob today. Uh, instead of the corner, uh, which we believe is too dangerous, and I, we agree, and Teresa agrees the same way. So we're t we went a little bit up the block, and we were thinking maybe the possibility is to move the curb in with a, that's a fire hydrant as you go further up, and then put, put the curb in and put some parallel parking, and then that way it will be a little safer. So we're going to get some pricing for that. So we're talking about blacktopping and moving the curb in. I think that will be maybe three or four parking spaces. George is going to give us the numbers. And, and we got to see what cost benefit. Is that worth the amount of money to find three or four parking spaces up there? As soon as George gets a price estimate, I'll provide that to the board and see how you want to move forward on that. I think that's the place Nick and I had yeah. we were out walking. I, I think that's the same yeah. place near that fire hydrant. Um, we, we were talking about a couple of spots, but you, Marcus was saying three or four. And then we, at the workshop, I want to have a discussion about the parking on Blakely Avenue. So, Marcus, if you, if you could put that down. Um, mm -hmm. Because we should not be supplying parking spaces for um, business cars to sit out overnight there. Yep, yep. And that's the other thing. We, when I talked to George and Bob, and we all agree, if we put parking spaces, there's no guarantee uh, who's going to get those spaces. It'll be oh, first come, right. first serve. Yeah. Yeah. So um, we might not be able to accomplish the goal of getting, you know, if the issue is that corner building where people park it on the sidewalk, they might not move when they might still stay there. So um, you have to talk about – we'll talk about that as well and see what you guys want to do if you want to move well, forward. Well, maybe if it's specifically meant for the for people – residences on uh, 9A there, maybe we can put, whether it's two, three, or four spots, uh, a permit required and, uh, and those yes. people get a permit. That's correct. That's a window. Correct. Yep. So that's an option. So George is going to be working on getting some design and what cost of that would be, and I'll get that to you guys. Okay? Thank you. Thank you. Okay. So I just have a few things. I, you know what? I want to give everybody a COVID update in the village. I, every day I get a report that shows who is tested positive, um, where they live, and I, I had to sign a non-disclosure agreement, so I can't disclose to anyone who these people are. Our police department gets it. Our first responders have been getting this for months. So, but what I do want to say is, you know, we've done well with with the virus in, in the village. We haven't had a lot of people who tested positive. The last person in the village that tested positive was on May 20th. We did have two other people 
um, in June that tested positive, but they were not living in the village. They have been in nursing homes. Um, one of them since has passed. So, but in general, within the general village population, there has been no one that has tested positive since May 20th. What is the total number of village cases to date? To date, I don't have that number off the top of my head. They don't like they don't give me a total on my on my thing that I received. They don't give me that. They just would, you know, say who tested positive. Um, also, I want everyone to know at the workshop, the board made the difficult decision to cancel Buchanan Day this year. Um, I, I know it's it's been it's been a terrible year. You know, we had to close the pool. We had to cancel camp. Um, you know, and also. Um, you know, it's just this virus is just a little unpredictable at this point for us to be uh, setting up events, and we don't know what's going to happen a month or two months from now. Um, also, the town, I understand, has, um, they had a movie night planned. Um, they have canceled that, and also the um, the concerts on the, the river that, that um, down at the Invert Plank has been canceled also. So um, they just did not comply with CDC guidelines, so that had to be canceled, too. One of the big things we have to really get behind here in the village, and I'm just not sure how to do this, is the census. We are lagging way behind. We're 10 points down from the last census that was done 10 years ago in 2010. It's very, very important that everybody fills the census out. It's very quick to do it. It's very, it's very easy. It's very quick. If anyone needs help, if they have any questions, um, we've gotten different flyers. Uh, you should have gotten mailings um, with information. Um, if you need help, if you, uh, Cindy, I'm sorry, I'm going to do this, but you know, um, Cindy and Sharon in the office have no problem answering your questions or trying to help you to get the census done because this is very important to every community. Each person means $22,000 in um, funding for the community. So we're off 10 points. We're off quite a bit. Um, so what I thought, oh, and what I also want to mention, especially with the COVID, this might have been pushed back, but the plan was August 11th, they were going to have people come out door to door through the community to do the census with you one-on-one. -on -one. So you know what? Right now, we don't want anyone at our doorstep. It's important to get this done, but we don't want anyone on our doorstep with the virus right now. So please, you know, it can be done by phone. It can be done on the computer. If you need help, we're all willing to help you to get this done because it's really important. And I, I mentioned something to you today, Marcus. Um, if we get some thermometers, um, you know how they have the fundraising thermometer things? If we could get a few of those days in the front of people's minds and we could maybe put one out at the circle, one on 9A in different places and show where we are to where our goal should be. So let me get you an answer for that one. I actually reached okay. out to Norma Drummond. Uh, they, they say they do have, they have, those are not free. They actually, municipalities are buying them from one vendor but to try to get a discount price. It's two hundred. Oh. It's two hundred and fifty dollars per per. No, rack. I saw it. I you know what? I went online to look at those today, and they're they're outdoor ones. They're dry erase, very much, 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 much cheaper. Yeah, okay. we're not spending two hundred and fifty dollars. I know. Yeah. I know. She uh, Norma also wanted to find out if she, if she might if she it works out if she can attend the next workshop to give the village board an update on on the census if that yeah. works for you, Mayor. Yeah, I'd like to have her come, please. Well, on Zoom, because we'll still be on Zoom. Yeah, be on Zoom. And then the other thing, we did, we did receive some bags from the Census Bureau. Okay. Uh, we actually, uh, Cindy confirmed me, we provided some to the um, the gas station. Um, and um, what was the other place we gave some to? Oh, Cindy, do you remember? On a blank, I know. Um, oh, it the, was, the was, Red Door Bakery, whatever that one's called. Okay. Yeah. 
Yeah, so if, if, if as a board, if you have any other, so like free bags, reusable bags, they want to give them out to people that actually have a lot of, so that way they can get the word out to the, to the, to, and customers. So if you guys have any other suggestions that we can drop off, we still have bags left. So everybody has to just we, we can drop them off. What are the bags? Where people can pick a bag up. You know, I mean, we can leave some on a hook or something outside, and people can swing by and and grab a bag. Yes, yeah, so they're going to go grab one right now. So if the board board mem members want that, that's fine. But if you have any places that you think a lot of residents go to to get the word out, just let me know. We can drop some more bags off. What are the bags? I don't. I'm not clear. What city, are the bags? City, 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 city's getting one right now. That's why she just walked out. Okay. So, and one of my other thoughts is with Norma, she said she had some type of a, a door hanger thing or something. So the next, the there next you go. There you go. Can you see it? Oh, let's see. No, oh, where are you, Cindy? Oh, okay. I'm looking for yeah. Cindy. And oh, how cute. It? Yeah, it's cute. And it opens up, I, um, you know, it opens I think up the residents would like, I wouldn't be giving too many out to the businesses, honestly, because yeah. not a lot of people, you know, the people that go to a lot of these businesses are from all over. I'd like to see our residents get that. Yeah, well, so if you, you have any places that we should drop some off, let me know. Mark, does, it, does it have instructions on how to uh, complete the census? No, not. no. This is help but if make you want, count? we'll put a note inside. <laughs> There you yeah, go. You know, those might be good for carrying fish over at Lens Cove. <laughs> <laughs> Thanks, Nick. You're a big help here. Um, you know what I was, did Norma tell you, um, did she mention to you if she can give us a list of people who have not completed the census yet? Or no? uh, she, yeah, I asked her. She has not replied to me yet, so I'll get you that answer. All right. Because then we can, we can do a door drop to these people with uh, information. You know, just leave it at their doors. That's, I'm just thinking. I'm just trying well, to get out of the box because this is really... Getting the flag to somebody doesn't assure that they do it. How about saying um, you can come to the village hall and pick one up through the window? And right. we'll tell you how to do the census. Oh, that's an idea. That'll work. Okay. The online version takes, like, it's no time. Minutes. Five minutes. Yeah. Not even. Nothing. Yeah. Okay, I'm done. Um, I finished what I needed to, to say here. Now, trustees report. Does anybody have anything for us this evening? I don't have anything. Okay. Um, I don't have anything either. Okay. Um, Dwayne? Yeah, I just want to say that, you know, the uh, highway department guys are doing a terrific job. They're, they're all over the place. Uh, they did some things over here at Lake Miha, and was telling me they discovered a, uh, uh, what was it, uh, not a tunnel, but a, uh, a catch basin that was underneath all the trees and shrubs uh. Uh, right off the lake. So, uh, you know, but they, I just want to say that the guys are doing uh, a great job, and they're doing uh, a lot of things across the village, and I certainly can, can see it here over at Lake Miha. Okay. Thank you. Okay, Trustee Zachary, what do you have for us tonight? Uh, just to want to kind of point out that that people in New York are really, I, th I think, uh, have, a, have for the most part have the right idea as far as keeping this spreading of the virus down. You know, we were the epicenter. We were the worst. In the country, we were worse than a lot of other countries, just as New York State. And um, it's been a real, it's difficult not being able to do everything we've done before. But but with the uh, hygiene, the mask wearing, and the distancing, and the restricting of activities, as much as it sucked, we are now one of the best places to be in the country. Mm -hmm. And um, it's unfortunate that a lot of other states are seeing big increases, and the virus does not follow state borders, so it doesn't help us here. So if somehow or other you've confused a public responsibility to be good to everybody else by wearing a mask and following proper hygiene, if you've confused that with politics and constitutional rights, get over it, because we all need to do the best we can to keep this thing under control. Uh, and I think... I'm, Proud to be a New Yorker right now, 
that's some, not something you could always say, but the, but it's been handled pretty well here for a difficult situation. So that's all I wanted to say. Oh, thank you. Okay, we're going to go on to comments from the floor. Cindy, do you have anybody that's called in that has any comments or questions? Yeah, I did have someone, another resident before that was just asking about Lens Cove and if there was any plans to make it more kid-friendly. And I just yeah. pretty much reiterated what you said, that if we could get free money, we will think about something, but not at the moment. We weren't going to do anything playground-like. Is that true? Okay, so what... What we were kind of looking to do um, and what, what I had put in, um, uh, you know, just some of the things, because there's, there's a lot of work that needs to be done over there, but the $15 million energy grant, what we'd like to do is redo the parking lot because let's remember that that was a dump at one time and that was never capped properly. So when you see all the wavy, lumpy, bumpy things, that's because the settling of the dump, that's where the dump was. So we'd like to do that. We'd eventually also like to put in a playground in that area, you know, um, kind of somewhere in the area. We do have that open field. So there's, there's a list of things that we'd like to do to make the park better. And a while back we had discussed something about um, putting a playground there. But for now we're kind of waiting to see where the energy money comes in, that, that money. And, and um, But that's still that's – still, on the burner it's it's not a no but it's you know we want to see what money we can get from energy first to redo lens cove whatever we need to do whether it's the bathrooms whether it's a boat ramp whether whatever you know whatever it is so um but yeah no that's a good point um uh, i don't think we'll ever use that field there again remember we had given approval to the volleyball team uh, there was a volleyball team, and they were supposed to build their courts there, and then COVID came along. Yep. I think yep. it was a meeting just before that. Mm -hmm. um, so, you know, we're looking to do things there, but if we can get money from Energy to um, do some substantial work over there, and that should be happening. That should be happening pretty soon because, remember, Energy closes their last plant in April. The sale to Holtec should be a few months later once the spent fuel is out of the um, reactor. So and they will be out of here. So we're within a within a year. Um, that should be there should be a major discussion on that. So yeah, okay. yep. Good point. Thank you. Okay. Can I can I add a little something to that? Oh. Uh, we are you know even though it's delayed. We are still meeting periodically with the local waterfront revitalization group. And uh, the last meeting, which was in in June, uh, some of the ideas for Lensco Park were you know brought up um, and Teresa mentioned some of them just now but you know the idea of a playground possibly a gazebo um, mm -hmm. a um, um, what else did we talk about possibly a kayak launch um, you know just various improvements and we are aware that I mean I think we'd like to make the park more kid friendly that would also kind of change this you know who it is that it that goes to the park. Um, and um, uh, another reason I don't want to take maintenance and repair money out of the rec fund, because a lot of times the grants are not 100%, but maybe 50-50. So, you know, having, you know, if we get a grant for 50 and we match it with 50, we can start to do some of those things. Uh, so, but, you know, it's, it's been discussed. I don't think anything's gonna, nothing's going to happen right away. Some of the financing things that, that the mayor just mentioned, as well as some of the other planning, uh, are taking place. Uh, but um, you know, so things will happen eventually, but not right now. We're, we're thinking about it, though. Mm -hmm. Okay. All right. That's all. No other comments. Oh. Okay. All right. Thank you for calling in. Okay. If there's no other trustee reports, I'd like to make a motion to go into executive session to discuss contractual and potential litigation. Come on. Second. All in favor? Aye. 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 Thank you for, for dialing in tonight.